Welcome to our AMD Lucid Automation Testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium Automation Testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium Automation Project. You may access our text project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we will talk about page object models. So, what are page object models? It is a design pattern in automation testing, which creates an object repository to store web UI elements. Why do we use page object models? Let us first look at our codes in test one. As we can see in test one, our code contains duplication, it's hard to read, and thus, it can be hard to maintain in the future. Our code also is not reusable. And therefore, we use project opt page object models to overcome these shortcomings. How do we use page object models? Well, first, we segregate web UI elements into class of pages and tests in test class which call functions from those class of pages. Here's a diagram outlining what I just described. We have two classes, pages and tests. Within pages, we specify various web UI elements and functions, and in test, we call upon those testing functions. Next, we will create our page object model. First, we'll create the part that tests this form on our website. To do so, first we have to make the package pages. We can do this by right-clicking here and creating a package called pages. Next, within this package, we will create a Java class called form. In this class, we will first import the necessary packages that we need. Following that, we will specify various web elements and methods needed to test. I have pasted it here. As we can see, first, I specify various locators for the web elements on our website. For example, name, email, telephone, and age. Next, I've created methods to test the various functions on our form in our website. For instance, this is enter text forms, this will test the drop-down list, and this will make it submit the form. After we create the form class under our package pages, as we recall in our page object model, we will need to create another class under test. We can do that by going to our test package and creating a new Java class called form. Here, I use the same name, but really the name is not that important. Similarly, we will first need to import the packages that we will be using. As we can see, we also use the JUnit after, before, and test within this test class. Next, I will paste the code within the class itself. Here, we also specify before, test, and after. Instead here, however, during our test, we create a form instance from our pages and we call upon the various methods within form. Now, I will see if this works by right-clicking the form class itself and then running form.
And as you can see, our class form successfully tests the form on our web page. The next part of our page object model will test the golf course on our website. So let me show you what that looks like. Here is a list of different golf courses. We can have the ability on this website to search the golf course, or we can filter the golf course by country. For instance, we can select Canada and click filter, and it will show us the golf courses found in Canada. Now, the purpose of this next part is we want to test this golf course portion on our website. So similarly, what we will do is first we will create a class under pages called golf. And as we did before, we will need to import the various packages necessary for this class. After, I'm going to paste over some code within the golf class. And in this code, we have the various web elements shown here. And we also have one method to test the search function and one method to test the uh, filter by country function. After we create the class golf under pages, next we'll need to create a class under the test for this page. So we will name this golf as well. And as we did before, we will paste the various uh, packages that we need to import. So this includes JUnit after, JUnit before, and JUnit test. And we will also paste this code that we have within the golf class. And like before, we specify the before, test, and after. And here we see that we create various instances of golf and we test various functions of golf. So for instance, here we test the search function and here we test the filter by country function. So let us see how this runs. As we can see, that was the search function and that was the filter by country function. In this next part, we will test the function on this web page that allows you to book a golf course. For instance, if you click this, it will allow you to book a golf course from this drop-down list. So, similar to before, we will need to create various classes for this test. First, we'll go under the packages page and we'll create a Java co uh, class called booking. And like before, we will import the packages that we need. And we will specify the various web elements and methods for testing. And here we see that the web elements are specified here and those functions that are specified down here. For instance, book golf course right here. Next, we will need to go to the test package and create another class. We will name this booking as well. And here, we will paste the necessary packages first. And then we will paste the various code 
within the class. Similar to before, this has a before, test, and after within this test class. So this time, when we run it, instead of running each individual one separately, you can actually have the ability to run all the tests. And we will just allow it some time to run this. And we see that this test is the form. And now we see that after running all the tests, the results are shown here. We see that for the booking test, we've tested book golf. For the form class, we tested the submit form. And for the golf class, we actually selected, or we actually tested both the search and the select country. And the reason for this one, it shows two, but for the other one shows one, is because under golf, we specified two tests. Now, with these results, we're actually able to export it directly from this IDE. All you have to do is hover your mouse here and slide it to the side, and we can export our test results here. And we just click OK, and we're done. Thank you for joining our Selenium Automation Test Tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you next time.